Okay, so now I'm going to show you a few things on how to use Ventoy. So I already have my production USB flash drive connected here. If I go in here, you can see that I have a bunch of files here. I have my images in my ISO folder right here. And uh, you can have your ISO files anywhere on the main Ventoy partition. Uh, you can also see the other Ventoy partition I was talking in my previous tutorial. If you go in here, these are all of the folders that the Ventoy uses, basically the Ventoy itself uses. And yeah, basically copy your files, folders, your ISOs, your whatever you need to boot from into your main Ventoy. Okay, so I'm going to start my system now. So I can select uh, the boot menu for Ventoy or whatever the boot key is. Okay, so I restarted my virtual machine and I had to hit F2, I think, from VMware workstation. In your case, depending what your manufacturer, who is your manufacturer of your system is, that will depend. It could be F2, F12, F11, F8, Escape. Uh, the best thing you could do is just look it up. So when I'm in my boot menu, obviously I'm going to select, I want to boot from my USB flash drive or USB device. And it's going to start booting from my USB flash drive that has Ventoy on it. This might take some time depending on your system performance. That is taking fairly long time. I'm not too sure why. Is it because it's a virtual machine? Because I never have done this on a virtual machine. That was interesting. It took about a minute to boot. That was fairly long in my experience. But anyway, so we are in the boot selection of different ISOs that I have on my Ventoy USB flash drive. And by the way, I replaced this with my logo and it's quite easy to do it. And I'll show you later on on how to do it. Basically, you can customize your themes. You can even download different themes. Uh, as long as you know how to use Photoshop or GIMP or even Paint, you can change the wallpaper for this boot menu. But anyway, let's continue with the tutorial. So we can use our navigation keys to scroll through the list. We can use also up and down keys to do a quicker scroll. And we can use end or home key to scroll down all the way to the bottom or the top. So I'm going to go to Windows right now, Windows 11. Let's say I want to install Windows 11. All of you are probably going to be installing Windows 11. So I'm going to scroll to Windows 11, hit enter. It's going to take us to another menu. In most cases, you would select enter again by booting in normal mode. You hit that, give it a few seconds, and it's going to start booting into Windows installation ISO, basically. Hit enter again or space. That's the prompt that you normally get from Windows. And that's basically it. That's how you boot from ISOs. But sometimes you might get an error message. More specifically, I would say it will fail to boot. For example, so let's say I want to boot from MicroReflect. I would select whatever version I want to boot from. Hit enter. And at this point, I want to select this option right here. This will boot it in different style basically, and it will continue booting as normal without me getting an error message. So I would select this particular boot WIM file. Normally you'll have one. And that's basically it. This is how you boot alternatively if it fails to boot in a normal way basically. But that's not supported by every single ISO, keep that in mind. After it's finished loading the WIM file, it will start booting into micro reflect. There it goes. It's already loading the Windows environment. Micro reflect uses Windows environment. And yes, that's basically it. This is how you use the tool. It's a very powerful tool. And I believe that is all. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed my content. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.